All right, everybody, I thought it was time to do a video and catch everybody up about a bunch of stuff that's been happening, uh, for better or worse. Uh, there is going to be a personal update, and then at the end of the video, there's going to be a channel update. If you're only interested in the channel update, which is perfectly fine, there will be a uh, chapter down below. Just click on the thing, it'll take you there. Uh, so, story time, uh, basically. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, two weeks ago, I went for sinus surgery because I had bad sinusitis, quite bad sinusitis. And after a scan, they determined there was structural damage in my sinuses. So they were recommended that they go in, correct the structural stuff, and then all my sinus problems should be a lot better, which is great. Um, so I'd saved up money for two operations this year, three operations this year. The one was in uh, February, which is the first boys operation. I was going to have a potentially uh, one for my acid reflux, but that never ended up happening. And then I was going to have the second voice operation. Uh, but because of this, my second operation actually ended up being the sinus operation. They quoted me an hour and a half to three hours. We pay for the, the full extent. And then if there's any difference, they give you back. Now, uh, my operation took four hours and 45 minutes. So 50% longer than the longest time that they thought it was going to take mainly because it was so infected. It was infected all the way up to here. So they had to go in, they had to remove the infection, they had to do the structural changes. I didn't even change my nose a bit. I don't even know whether you can see it, it's like little lumps here, uh, just to try and prove the whole sinus thing. Uh, this was 14 days ago, 16 days ago, not entirely sure. Operation was a success. Uh, however, um, let's say, the operation, the initial operation, cost a bag of money. Oh, well, yeah, we'll use bag. Um, it going 50% over means that I spent a bag and a half of money on the operation, which, when I was only expecting to spend a bag. Uh, which, you know, it's fine. That's why you have an emergency fund. This is why we have a nest egg. Um, and... Uh, after the operation, I still had two stints in my nose, or stints, splints. So th that was to keep the shape change and then allow me to breathe, which was fine. Uh, last week, Friday, those came out. Um, no problem. Uh, I was free to go, uh, which was great. However, 12 hours after that, I developed a nosebleed, which I just thought was a nosebleed. Um, I was out at the time, managed to stop it. Thankfully, it was the end of the evening anyway. And I went home. And then for the next nine hours, I battled to stop the nosebleed because it started again. I would stop it and it would go again. And then I would stop it and then it would go again. Eight o'clock the next morning, I'm like, okay, something is seriously not right here. We're going to the emergency room. So off we go. Emergency room looks at it and they're like, look, unless we can't get a hold of the original surgeon, we're not going to touch this. We really don't want to touch this. So Thankfully, my doctor was pretty awesome. Uh, we managed to get his emergency number, get a hold of him on a Saturday. And uh, he was like, okay, come to the hospital, the original hospital, uh, book yourself in, and then we'll sort it out. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, the operation, uh, the one that I went to that did the original surgery doesn't have an emergency room. They're a specialist hospital, so they don't have an emergency room, but they do have surgical suites. Went there, booked myself in. Um, when I was in ER, they gave me some coagulation drugs to try get the blood clot. Um, managed to get to the hospital, managed to get booked in. He came in, had a look, and it pissed blood all over the place, just horrendously. Um, but he got could see it on the camera because he stuck a camera in the nose um, and he was just like no okay this is pretty bad um, we're going to try to do this non-surgically so he put a coagulant powder onto the affected area and then he put um, batting I want to say batting but it's not batting it's uh, whatever they do packing they uh, packing into you so he packed it as tight as he could with a coagulant in the hopes that it'll stop the bleeding long enough that it could form a proper scab and then just not bleed. 
um, stayed the night in the hospital. And he's like, look, if your nose bleeds after this, it's surgery. Straight out. We're going to go in there and cauterize. So uh, last Saturday, I was in hospital overnight. Five o'clock on Sunday, sprinkler system. Uh, so that meant surgery. Um, thankfully, me and the nurses managed to get it under control. And then within four hours, I was in surgery. Supposed to be a half an hour surgery, ended up being a two hour surgery uh, because the infection had come back. Uh, it's quite a resilient infection. So he had to go in, he cauterized the leak and then removed all the uh, infection again. He's like, look, you're gonna have to stay here for 48 hours. We're gonna pump you through as many antibiotics as you can take. We're gonna put it into you just to try kill this thing. Um, at this point today, I've been on antibiotics for about 35 days. So it's not a good thing. Um, and then I also wanted to observe in case I sprung a leak again. So that was that. So I spent Sunday night and Monday night in hospital. Thankfully, nothing happened. However, Sunday, when they did the operation on Sunday, they pulled a muscle in my neck quite badly. Um, I mean, if it's the biggest complaint I have from all of this, then it's really not a complaint, but it did give me a massive migraine when I came out of surgery. So Sunday night, I don't remember much because it was just massive amounts of pain from my neck. It was up my shoulder, into my eardrum, into my eye, and then across my head. It was truly not fun. And eventually they managed to give me some painkillers to calm it down so I could sleep. Uh, but Saturday came, the migraine was gone. So, uh, sorry, Saturday, Monday came and the migraine was gone, sat mon Monday, cool. Uh, slept Monday there, came home on Tuesday. So I'm seeing him again on Tuesday today, uh, Tuesday this week. So yeah, been an exciting week. I mean, not to mention that I had a uh, acid reflux attack that I haven't had in years, which is basically a heart attack. So you get deferred pain and just in this chest, stabbing pain. Haven't had it in years, had one on Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Um, nausea from all the drugs uh, and all of that. Since I've been out, uh, I've been flushing my sinuses with gentamicin and hydrogen peroxide, which burns like a decker. Uh, but things seem to have uh, calmed down. Uh, the sinuses are clearing out. Uh, there isn't as much gunk coming out. I'm still a bit nasally, but it, it, it's okay. Uh, so that that's the health front. We are recovering from this. So all of that extra surgery was another bag. So instead of spending one bag's worth of money, I've spent three bags worth of money on the sinuses, which I'm not on a medical aid or um, the equivalent for your country. I can't remember what the Americans call it, health insurance, I think. Um, this is primarily because for a very long time, we couldn't afford medical aid for everyone in my family. So my wife had the medical aid. Um, and then when we could afford it, we had started the process of immigrating. And I was like, well, why do I want to go on a medical aid when I'm leaving the country? And this was 10, 20, uh, 10, 12 months ago. The other thing is uh, medical aid wouldn't cover these elective surgeries for pre-existing conditions for six months. So I'd have to have a medical aid for six months before it would cover the operation, but it would have covered the emergency part of the operation. So uh, next week, we're gonna speak to some people and I'm gonna get myself medical aid just in case, because we don't know how long this um, immigration thing is gonna take. It could take another three months, could take another six months. So rather, err on the side of caution, we're going to get me medical aid because we're going to afford it now. Um, the same time, the night I was there, there was a double homicide robbery in a house two blocks away from my house. So my wife was not impressed. And uh, the 
couple of days prior to that, there was a 15 man armed robbery in a shopping center close to us. So the crime rate in our area has picked up a shit ton over the last while. It wasn't a great area to start off with. At, no, by far means not the worst area. There, there are many areas that are a lot worse, but definitely not a good area. Um, so with that, um, one of the things it, it factors into, you know, we were going to move, but then we were going to immigrate. So why go through the process of selling the house, finding a new house to rent or buy, and we could just stay in this house that's fully paid for. So we don't have to add an extra cost and then spend that extra money towards immigrating. Uh, hindsight is that, you know, may not be the, the best of decisions. Then, um, when I was speaking to the doctor just after the operation, I said, look, just, just a question. Is there an environmental thing? Could this have been caused by an environmental thing? And I asked this simply because in my area, people are burning stuff all the time. There could be wood, it could be leaves, it could be rubbish or garbage or whatever you want to call it. It could be rubber or, you know, just all sorts of not great things being burnt around. And he's like, yeah, it could very well be. Uh, do I live in a old house? And I said, yeah, I live in an old house. He's like, does it have carpets? I'm like, yeah, they've got old carpets. He's like, look, so the old carpets probably aren't helping. The people burning stuff probably aren't helping. So, you know, he recommends that if I could to move to a better place or not, he didn't recommend that. It's just like, look, yeah, the house could be causing problems. The area could be causing problems. So whilst sitting in hospital, came to the decision that we're going to move. Uh, this is something that uh, I think most people would do if they had the means to, because right now, sorry, right now, I can't work for at least two days a week because of my noisy neighbors. So I can't work. The safety in the area has dropped. So moving would be safer. Moving wouldn't mean I can work more and now moving means that I'll have better health so it's all pointing towards I need to probably move to a better house area so that we can start doing stuff again so we made the decision we're going to be looking at places and we're going to be moving within the next month um that opens up a whole separate can of worms we need to make sure that the empty house that we're going to be selling doesn't get hijacked, which is when uh, people move in and legally you can't get rid of them. Uh, normally it'll be uh, somebody related to a gang or something moves in for at least a month and then you rent your house out to other people and there's nothing you can do about it. There's a, a lengthy court battle to maybe do something about it. So we're going to have to have more security on the house whilst it's empty and we're selling uh so yeah next week i'm getting a medical aid i think for obvious reasons i'm moving oh we're looking at places to move to for again obvious reasons and um stuff the the doctor visits and checking everything out so we should be fine however because of the cost of the three operations it did seriously take a huge chunk out of my nest egg uh, I'm not complaining. I'm not begging for money. I'm just, it took a lot of amount of money. So I'm going to have to postpone my voice off until next year. Uh, but considering that four years ago, my um, nest egg was a loose change jar in my kitchen, I'm not complaining. But that brings me to, quite simply, the reason why I can do this all is because of you guys. Um, I haven't had to worry about the channel. I haven't had to really worry about making ends meet because of you guys uh and the surgeries in themselves i could afford because of you all because of the patrons the channel members people watching the videos the super thanks all of that stuff has made this whole process possible and bearable i mean i haven't posted a video in a good couple of weeks and the channel is still doing okay it's cool um what else? Oh, the whistling sound is my nose. Apparently they stole one when I was asleep. Um, so, yeah. I got that nest egg. I got everything. 
from doing one thing and that, that that's working so i'll just do it again it's not, not a major train smash i'll save up do it again and hopefully there'll be less emergencies so there might be some disruptions in the next couple weeks in general but overall we should be in a better place by november uh or even the beginning of october so a couple weeks um but yeah so uh, very exciting week and that just proves that not all excitement is great excitement so i'm going to do the only thing i can and the only thing that enabled all of this and that's going to suit up Greetings! Ladies! And... Men. Energy. Enough with the series shit. Now, on to the fiction. All right. Now, back in production mode. So, the channel updates are pretty simple. TFOS will be coming back pretty soon. And uh, we'll be heading into uh, series as well. Uh, two series a day, one TFOS. One new thing that's going to be happening is something that people have asked for, something I've been thinking about for a very long time, is doing a TFOS remastered. So I'm going to be taking TFOS from TFOS 1. I'm going to do it again. This time with all the production value and the four years of experience at voice acting and narrating. And we'll see how that goes. So we'll go back to four videos a day for the foreseeable future. Now, just warning you, it might take a while to ramp up to those four videos. Definitely going to start off with TFOS for a week or two. Then we're going to start introducing series and then by the end of November, we'll probably have four videos a day, every weekday. And then two videos a day on the weekend. Um, yeah, I hope you're all excited about this as I am to get back into the swing of things. And yeah, leave a comment down below if there's a specific one that you want to listen to. And I'll see what I can do. But we are back. We are suited up and we are ready for business. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.